very rate, and there is a maintenance program, uh, and the, they will be kept wind and water tight. Uh, there is also full-time security. So it is, of course, an expensive operation to keep them empty. Not so long ago, there were echoes of happier times in the hangars at Bentwaters. This was the final fling. To the music of Glenn Miller, memories of half a century of cordial coexistence between the Americans and their East Anglian hosts. It was known in the trade as the friendly invasion. day brigade at Bentwaters has a different taste in musical entertainment. Please. Thank you. Go and get your bottles on the floor. That's it. Well done. This is their Valentine Disco. Objective to raise money for the newly formed Residents Association and have a right old neighbourly knees up. Since they still don't have a venue for such occasions, they've hired a village hall two miles down the road, a trek everyone was prepared to make. Tonight just goes to show that people, especially at the weekends, they want to go out, they want somewhere to go. Um, and the response that we've had tonight just goes to prove that. I mean, it's a chance. A lot of these people have sort of moved in within the last month. They don't know anybody up on the estate where we live. And this is their chance to meet other people. Back at the base, Debbie Birch gave us a guided tour of the new community, or at least those bits of it which are not out of bounds to the people who live there. We feel that things could have been done a lot quicker than what they actually have been. All right, things are being done now, but it's taken too long. Um, our general impression is that people are just after money. They're not really interested in what people want or how they feel. Um, and I think if things have been thought of more clearly at the beginning, then we wouldn't be in the position now where we've got empty buildings just sitting there waiting for things to happen. So what do you want and how do you feel? Well, basically I think the most important thing is we want a community building and a shop and the doctors. Those are the three basic things that you would get in a normal village anyway. Isn't that the building behind us, the one that you want to get your hands yes, on for a community that building? Is. Um, that was the child development building that was actually the Americans preschool. It's ideal. I mean, everybody said, of course, very big. But when you go to a village, you have like the village hall, and then you have somewhere for the brownies, somewhere for the guides, etc., etc. And if you put all these buildings together, you'd end up with a building the size of the child development. Um, so we're asking, you know, just for that. The child development building is a good example of the frustrations which beset the new Bentwaters. It belongs to the MOD but cannot be released until the whole development package is agreed with the local authority. There are also practical difficulties, connecting up the water and sewage services, which have been cut off for just one building. So a place which everyone agrees would be ideally suited to the needs of the new community collects cobwebs, while the authorities confer, the security men patrol, and the residents' resentment grows. What we want is to have one big community, but with the concrete blocks being in place and the fact that we're not allowed to go onto the base, it separates us. I mean, we don't want to be known as two separate estates, you know, we want a general whole feeling for up here. But with these problems in place, it is creating a divide. When Debbie's friend Linda, who lives on the other half of the estate, wants to visit her, she has to detour more than a mile along the main road to complete a trip which is barely 400 yards as the crow flies. As you can see, we've got no footpath, so we have to walk on the grass verge. Um, down further down there, we have to walk on the road. Um, 
And the main, another drawback is the fact that we can't nip through the base because of the security men on patrol all the while, so that is one of the reasons we have to walk down the road. The Americans provided facilities for their service families which seem, by our standards, ludicrously lavish. This community centre, with its concert hall and professional stage, was completed only months before the Pentagon announced they were pulling out. Expanses of pile carpet, reputedly costing £50 a square yard, floor-to-ceiling partitions of North American maple, virtually unused and most likely unusable. Well, we're standing here outside a community centre, but there is no community, is there? You've got one heck of a problem on your hands. Yes, we've already got residents who are living uh, on the base, but yes, we have no significant community facilities to support them. The property at the base was in various different ownerships. The majority of the community buildings are owned by the Ministry of Defence. The houses are privately owned. What we're now trying to do is work with the Ministry of Defence to bring on stream, uh, workshops, employment, premises, uh, community facilities, shops, doctors' facilities, matters such as that, for us to clarify the planning situation, the Ministry of Defence to market the property and get occupiers. Well, there's a complete mixture of buildings here. A lot of the buildings that are on the airfield site of the base uh, would in fact lend themselves to normal employment use. There are large hangars, there are office buildings. Those can be reused uh, by a number of different employers. On the domestic side of the base, there are big buildings like the community centre we have here, uh, which in fact are rather too big for the sort of town that will probably evolve here. So we're trying to get the right balance uh, in terms of encouraging investment, but not trying to pretend that the site is so attractive and, and make plans that will never be fulfilled. It depends what you mean by attractive. Parked on an approach road is Bentwater's only shop, a mobile van looking well past its sell-by date. Colin Meekings would love to run a proper, permanent shop here. Instead, he sets up camp most evenings and at weekends, selling everything from hamburgers to batteries. His customers often don't have transport to the nearest supermarket. With Colin, they're not exactly spoiled for choice. I don't know who's responsible, but somebody should open up the rest of the base, where all the facilities once were, the shops, and allow people to come in and do what they do best. The shopkeepers, librarians, cinemas, that's what the people need here. And the facilities are there, the buildings are there, but uh, nothing's happening. Colin remembers Bentwaters when it seemed everything was happening. The base was action-packed. Shops and restaurants were always busy. Bentwaters became a social and commercial centre, which brought activity and prosperity, not just to the Americans, but to the surrounding district. The place was full of life. It was going 24 hours a day. And the facilities on base were also open to the local residents, the bowling alley and McDonald's, things like that. And it's all gone. Yeah, so it's, it's hard to explain the difference. It's just dead. It died slowly. It's a ghost town. It's a ghost town with living people. The ghosts of airplanes past still hover over Bentwaters. American Mustangs and Flying Fortresses use the base, as they use so many East Anglian landing strips, as a launching pad for raids over Germany at the end of World War II. Those were the glory days. Two one ninety's. Hi. That Jerry Pilot no, mail is going low. The aircraft came down to earth. So did Washington's assessment of the need to maintain a billion dollar defense presence on Suffolk soil. The peace dividend had paid off. The Yanks went home. The loudest engine you'll hear at the end of the runway nowadays is Robin Sheepshank's Range Rover. For 30 years, he was the American's next door neighbor. He still can't get used to the change. When they left, most people were very sad. Uh, we certainly uh, benefit by the lack of traffic because there was an enormous number of cars. Every single American, every wife had a car too. So that is certainly much more peaceful. But we regret it, I think, because they were very good neighbours, uh, quite apart from the fact that they were part of NATO and defending this country, which was, of course, desperately important in the time of the Cold War. The fields and farm cottages, which used to shudder to the afterburners of the squadrons of fighters, are uncannily quiet. 
Now they've gone, it's clearly a lot quieter. You've got your countryside back, haven't you? Yes, we have, but we don't know whether 